where'd you get the shirt? The, uh, uh, combine when Noble did their uh, combine last year, had to, uh, did, did some like modeling for the for the line. Got a bunch of them. Yeah. Talked a little bit uh, last week about maybe tweaking just your, your footwork just a little bit on the base. Yeah, no, I mean, quarterbacks are weirdos. We're always tweaking with something. We always like feel like something might be off. Like you saw Brady go through a handful of different footworks throughout one season. Um, and just ball wasn't coming out the way that I would have liked it to. And we just started looking at what could potentially be the cause of it and just been messing around with things, specifically with my base, that I feel like have got me into a good spot. Did you come to them with that, or did they come to you? Just kind of what was the genesis of starting to tweak it? I think it was uh, it was both. I mean, it was obviously, like I know when I'm not throwing it uh, my best, and just talking through with Bo and, and Nick and Brian about why that might be, and just a couple of things that I can kind of hold in the back of my head and, and practice and pre-practice, and then hopefully have a transition in, into drills, and I feel like it has so far. Seems like you're also holding the ball up towards your ear more, or you know, above your shoulder more. Is that something that you're cognizantly doing too? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, I can I can get to points during practice where I'm like too low and, and not getting my arm up a little bit. You know, some throws require different arm slots, so being able to have everything in that clock is important. But like, yeah, I feel like I have been working on being able to get a little bit more over the top sometimes. Early in the program, but. Uh, what's it been like, I guess, getting on the same page, working with so many new faces in the offense? How do you think that's going so far? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, today was the first time, you know, with literally everyone uh, here, you know, which was cool. And small things showing up, like improvement-wise, going back to just three weeks ago to now. Uh, the couple of routes, the couple of details that maybe as a quarterback, as a receiver, a lot of us haven't had to be able to get a lot of reps with. And now that we have some under our belt, uh, you know, it's it's becoming more second nature, and guys feel more comfortable out there. How are you coming along as far as like, like you look at today? There were a couple of throws where you might have been a little late on, like the processing and, and timing and everything. How are you coming along from that perspective? Uh, yeah, and I think it just takes reps, and I think once I bank more of these, uh, you know, these concepts each, I might have two or three per concept, and you know, we talk about it, it takes a whole lot more to really uh, build that repertoire and, and and have the answers earlier than you might have them now. So I feel like the more I see it, the more I get to rep it, the easier it'll come. And just got to study it and understand that when I make a mistake, try not to make it happen again. Yeah, I know before, like last year, like the perfectionist in you would, would probably harp on that. How have you matured to be able to just move on from those and go to the next play? Uh, yeah, I just feel like I've, um, I think I've done a better job of that just throughout my career in general. Definitely even last year, better than I was in college. And now I feel like I'm just more in a mature, you know, developed position where I'm able to really just learn and, you know, take the the teachings from a from a bad rep opposed to, you know, letting it affect me on, on the next one. How much have your wide receivers been a part of that too, specifically Tyler Boyd, who's obviously more familiar with this scouting offense? Yeah, I think it's just them instilling confidence in me and, and me continuing to give it to them. Um, knowing when I might be having a, a down day or a down period, like, you know, even Tyler is as short as he's been here. He's been in my ear a couple of times about, you know, letting me know, you know, how, the kind of quarterback that he knows that I can be, and uh, and vice versa. If the guy's not having a great day, a drop or something, making the conscious effort to come back to them, not not just w with talking but with the ball and to show that I'm going to keep keep uh, pushing them. So uh, it's been it's you know it's a give and take relationship, and you know we've been handling it well. Well, you think back to last year and how much you were trying to learn at this point in the camp last year as a rookie. How much more comfortable are you as you enter this week now? Yeah, for sure. Even though it is a new offense, obviously having the, the previous handful of weeks to, to be able to bank reps and have meeting time to, to get to know the offense um, would have made it a lot uh, easier, you know, having that time before, rookie, uh, before camp last year. So uh, just taking advantage of all that time, which I feel like I have. And uh, thanks. And um, knowing that all the meeting times and all the stuff we were able to do throughout um, workouts and, and OTAs up to now has put me in a much better spot and has given me a lot more confidence. How much of that even in the leadership aspect? Like, I mean, I don't even know. Would you wear that shirt last year at this time? I mean, you can do it pretty confidently now. Uh, no, I mean, it's funny. I, the, I was number eight at the combine, actually. That was my combine number. This was just for the actual catalog, but the other ones I have are all with the eight, and I happened to just grab the one with the one today. I didn't even realize. But yeah, it's funny. But um, probably wouldn't have worn it last year, that's, that's for sure.
Where are you with Josh Wiley, and, and what kind of bigger role do you, do you kind of envision for him in this offense now? Uh, I love Josh. He's, he's a juice guy that we got on this team, and he's come along as one of those guys just this year, which has been cool to see him come out of his shell and, and just be a, a really cool and fun presence in the locker room. And he works his tail off. He, he's prepared every day. He puts a lot on himself. I feel like that's why we're pretty similar. And, and ever since we, we came here near as rookies, we've been kind of hip to hip and being able to keep keep ourselves accountable. So he's made huge strides. Uh, you can tell just from the moment he got here for workouts that he really worked on himself and his body and uh, how he's, he was going to approach this year. And it, it's paid off for him a lot. And I'm looking forward to continuing to see him develop. How's your relationship developing with a little Kush, man? Sorry? How's your relationship with with Kush? It's been good. It's been good. We, we've been hammering him every single day and the whole entire offensive line about how we're not going to hold back when it comes to cadences. And we're going to you know empty the bag and start using them all right now. Uh, we can't be the team we were last year with all of the you know shoot ourselves in the foot penalties we had um, leading the league in false starts. It's not going to get it done. Um, so they've been doing a really good job with that, and obviously he's leading that group and, and has a lot of great experience and has a really good hold on our protection system and our point system. So he's been great for, for me, and he's been great for everyone else in the offense, and I feel really comfortable with him you know, when I get under center or when I'm on the gun with him. How much of a believer are you in the year two jump for players in the league in terms of just knowing what to do, how to do it, and you know how much have, have people talked to you about how much of a difference just one year in your in the league can make? Uh, not too much. I think it's it's not doesn't just happen. It's not just just because it's the second year. It's the work that you get to put in, and I think a lot of it has to do with being able to have that full off season with the staff and with the team instead of just jumping in like right around this time. Um, but yeah, I think I've handled myself really well and I've been able to get a good grip on this offense. And by the time I, we come back for camp, I'm going to know it like the back of my hand and we're going to be able to get things rolling. So um, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I feel like I just got to keep handling this second year uh, the right way and everything else will fall into place. When you look at this team nationally, for some reason, you seem to be a, a polarizing figure. Either people love you or they hate you. How much of that do you hear and how much of that drives you? Uh, I don't hear much of it, I, I don't say. Uh, I wouldn't. I used to be someone who kind of like take that stuff and use it to to fuel me. But I feel like now it's. I just. I have my only source of motivation is internal, and I'm not going to let anyone else's opinions define kind of how I work. So uh, they can say what they want, and we're going to go out there on Sundays and do our best to prove them wrong. What changed that for you? Uh, I think that it's just like I, I don't want to have to be we aware of other people's opinions, and I think it's just going to bog me down and. and if I'm able to just focus on myself in the in my circle in the in the locker room, then everything else will be fine. Well, you mentioned the false starts. Um, what are some things that you could do to avoid them, and how important is that to you going forward? Uh, reminders, you know, just approaching the huddle in a way to let them know what cadence we're on, you know, before and after. Consistency with how I'm. It, it, it's crazy. Like, you can have a different tempo in how you're calling a play in the huddle if you're not having the same exact kind of rhythm as the other quarterbacks or the same rhythm as you've been doing it, they're so used to hearing it a certain way. The second that you're saying it differently, they're, they're only focused on hearing the play, and they might not realize like what happened before that. So being consistent with how I'm managing the huddle uh, and just doing my best to give them reminders, but not being overt about it. You know, We can't be <laughs> running up to the line saying, on two, on two. So um, just continuing to work and, and trusting them and showing that I have trust in them that we can use all sorts of cadence. Well, last week, Tyler told us Callahan's system is one that results in scoring points and winning. What has that looked like to you throughout the install so far? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of scoring. <laughs> a lot of the install clips we see is just a lot of explosive plays, efficient plays, touchdowns. Um, and you can see you know, why it works and, and seeing the clips and, and the, the answers versus everything, like how Everything has an answer, and it's on me, the quarterback, to get to that answer as soon as possible. So that's part of the, the processing part of it, like being able to move on and recognize and, and, and in the back of my head know what the answer should be and, and seeing it and getting, it, getting to it. But um, again, I just feel like it's going to come with reps. Like the more and more reps I get at all these different concepts and stuff, uh, we're going to be able to see more and more of those explosive plays. And when we go out there on Sunday, we're hopefully put up a bunch of points. As you go through and, and tweak some of those mechanics that you have, uh, you know, worked on you and, and Brian Callahan, obviously. But how does that balance with all the work that you put in with Rob Williams and, and QB Motion? Like, how do you go about making sure yeah. that they're transferring? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, sometimes it can be difficult. Like 
taking coaching from different people, but I feel like it's it's all about just what feels comfortable for you. You, you I love everything that I that I do with Rob, and uh, I feel like at the same time, like I'm able to take all those teachings and and, and apply it to my own kind of uh, process and, and mechanics, uh, how I feel. Uh, that suits me. So being able to take those teachings and then also be able to talk to Callie and take some of his opinions and, and a couple of considerations that he has and implementing those, uh, it's just a mix of both. And then it's on me to decide what's best for me and what's most comfortable for me. And, uh, you know, both sides are in on it in terms of uh, their awareness. Rather than being a mediator, do you plan on getting those two in contact with each other? Yeah, I actually have. I was thinking about, you know, if, even next time I'm able to hop on a call with Rob, if he could just sit in and hear kind of how he's able to teach me throughout the session. And then afterwards, instead of uh, seeing and, and learning about the teachings that he's told me, like really seeing it in, in action and then giving me his opinions in, in real time. Between, I guess, the time OTA's in next week before training camp starts to kind of get yourself peaking for camp. Yeah, I'll be here till mid-June. Uh, we're doing a little retreat with, the, with some skill guys, uh, which will be fun. So get out and be able to do some study and run some routes and, and team bond and kind of chill. Um, so we're excited for that. Uh, I'll be with my family back in Connecticut for a little bit, and then I'll come back here about a week before you know camp starts. Will, working with Tajay and, and Tony to this point, what has that been like? Obviously, you had Tajay last year, but working with Tony and then having that with that skill set, how, how can that maybe open up what you guys want to do? On yeah, no, it's awesome. We, we've seen so many clips of just getting to the check down and, and what the backs are able to do when they're able to get the ball in their hands earlier before the defense closes on them and how important that is to get to those check downs faster and faster and faster. Um, and we and I have confidence now every single time that we drop back and whatever running back's going to be in our backfield that, you know, dump it down and they're able to make someone miss and, and go get a first down. So opposed to, you know, hanging on certain things and taking that extra hitch uh, gives me the, the peace of mind and confidence to just take that second hitch back to the back take him and, and know that he can get that first too yeah i just uh i can just take questions briefly though just another big pressure day from our defense big pressure pickup day for us um on third down so we saw all the varieties of pressures that denard's got in his bag and all the different answers we have to have for it so really really good work um really hard work for june in the off season uh to be able to go against all that stuff so um that was really fun for us to get to do it, with it being mandatory, uh, mm -hmm. is there anyone who's not in attendance this week? We didn't see a couple guys out there. Is it because of injuries? Yeah, or? everybody's here. Uh, we did not have anybody uh, not present in the building for meetings and all that stuff. Everybody's here. Uh, a couple guys still working through the rehab process that weren't on the field, but everybody's here. With uh, the speed, is it going to be a maintenance thing there for him you know, as you go? Yeah, well, to, it's a management thing. They manage him in Kansas City. Uh, we'll manage him here. Um, and so he's working back from, you know, from all the things he's got to work back from. But uh, it'll be a management thing throughout the course of training camp and into the season. Indications were that, that sweat was probably a short-term thing. Has it yeah. turned into a longer-term thing? No. I mean, when you talk about short-term versus long-term, whether it's a week or two weeks or three, um, that's kind of how, it, at this point, what it is. He'll be ready and available for, for the start of training camp for sure. Should be out here maybe next week. We'll see. But um, it's still considered a short-term. Also a short-term thing with Jeff? Yeah, correct. The pressure part, how tough is it to distinguish maybe when you credit a guy out, <laughs> when you credit a guy with a sack and uh, yeah. how, how's that determination made and is that sometimes met with the conflict? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, there's never sacks, if you're asking me. Um, no, it's a, there's definitely a, a balance. I mean, we, we want those guys to be mindful of the quarterback and not get not, not enter that area. We know when guys are free and if it's a sack, and we know when guys have won a rep. Um, I'm pretty fair about, about that. Now, in the moment, I might, I might not be just because I, I like seeing them get all riled up. But um, we're, uh, we're all on the same page on what, it, what a sack's going to look like uh, when the pressure's coming. It's, uh, we all know. We're just trying to make sure that guys stay off the quarterback and stay out of the, the, the pocket so that we don't hit hands on helmets and all that stuff. So uh, that part uh, is usually pretty fun, though, because they're all, they're all looking for everything's a sack to the defense. Uh, and that's not always the case. So, I know it's uh, like you said, it's short term, and there's nothing you can really do about injuries. But, but how difficult is that for a rookie in the first off season to be kind of missing time a little bit? Yeah, it's never ideal. You know, it's not. Um, you never want to, to miss any time if you can help it. Um, 
there's a, an adjustment period that guys go through that you, you want them to be out and present for as much as possible. Um, but again, there's not much you can do about it. And as long as guys are still on top of the mental side, um, the physical work kind of comes along with it. There's plenty of time for that still. But uh, yeah, certainly not what you want. You don't, you don't want to miss time if you can help it. How much of a believer are you in the year two jump, especially for a quarterback? And is it altered any by the fact that you're putting in a new system? Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, improvement that happens when players go from their first to second year. And, and maybe it might not be necessarily a statistical jump either. There's just – they just become so much more comfortable playing the game. There's, there's so much more around them that they're aware of. There's so much more – they're more comfortable in their system, the techniques that are asked, and then what it feels like to play. Um, there's always a big jump, I think, from one year one to year two, just like there is sometimes in the season where, you know, that first or second week to that third or fourth week looks a lot different sometimes. So um, – I believe in it. I think there's there's something to that just because of the experience that they gain uh, from year one to year two, and the system probably you know may limit it just a bit because not you're not jumping from year one to year two with the same techniques and coaching. So there might be a little give and take there, but um, yeah, I think there's a huge improvement usually from the first year to the second year. Has it been tougher than you expected to get a read on what you have defensively with so many of the guys missing or injured or out? Not really. Um, I think I got a pretty good feel for what, we're, what we are on defense. Um, the guys that, are, that have been – that are here and practicing, we got a great feel for. Some of the guys that are still returning to play, uh, I kind of know what those guys are about too. So uh, what it looks like together, I'm anxious to see it. Uh, but I don't uh, – I got a pretty good feel for what I think we're capable of on defense. Bill yeah. mentioned the things he liked about Sadiq on film. Mm -hmm. How much have you seen those things translate into the or what you can see out of an offensive lineman? Yeah, no, you see, you see Sadiq's uh, strength and power. Uh, those things, those things do show up. His athleticism, um, and he's learning a lot of new techniques as well. So that's been fun to see him grow. Uh, you see him starting to take the next step, uh, kind of as the days have gone by here. So. Um, been good to see from him. So I, I, there's a lot to like about Sadiq, and, and he's got some experience playing as well. So uh, you hope that he's another guy that can um, really ascend as he, as he learns more and more. I've seen, we've seen uh, or heard rave, rave reviews about trailing from, from you mm -hmm. and guys on, uh, in the receiver room, guys in the corner room. But yep. we also see him working today as, as a gunner. If, if he winds up fourth in line at the position, no matter how good he is, is he going to have to contribute on special teams, and what can he do there? Absolutely, he's going to have to contribute. You know, you only get so many hats on game day, and uh, if he's one of those guys on game day, we're going to have to find a place for him because uh, those special teams, guys like him should should be great special teams players on top of it just because of his size and speed. Um, and so the gunner thing is something I think he's very capable of doing. There might be some more roles for him um, in the other phases as well. But, yeah, anytime you're not you're not the, the full-time starter, you're going to have to contribute some more on game day. And, and I think uh, Trey's attitude and, and approach to special teams has been fantastic. And so uh, I'm excited to see what he could do for him. I think he's an asset on special teams. Another guy that uh, is getting a long look there? Yeah, you have to. Uh, just same same reason. If, if you're not one of the, the, the top two or three guys, you're going to have to contribute on teams. And, um, you know, he's, he's a guy in that, in that mold that if you're trying to get a hat on game day and, and be one of the, the 46 active, uh, you got to have, you got to play a role uh, on special teams, especially as, as a skill player. Along those special teams lines with the new kick return rule and all of that, how do you go about, like, does it change who you put back there as far as like, the skill set? And, and at what point are you guys as far as in strategizing how you're going to approach it? Yeah, Colt's doing a really good job of, of researching and, and playing with different lineups and combinations of, uh, of what that might look like. We don't know yet. Um, that's the hard part is um, there's a lot of unknowns, and, and I think there'll be a little bit of chaos in the preseason with it just in terms of everybody trying different things. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different lineups and personnel that you can mess around with and see what might work. Um, and, again, we won't really know until we, we see it live in, in an NFL game. But um, – there's some there's some opportunities for some different guys to do things in that in that particular phase of the special teams. I've heard some people refer to that as like an additional offensive play. Mm -hmm. So that being said, does that change? Like you mentioned, guys who aren't who are non-starters mandatory playing special teams, but does that change where you have the potential to put a starter back there? Feel yeah, the absolutely. I think you'll see a lot of guys. Um, I think you'll see some running backs back there on a the league. You'll see some designated returners. You'll see a different style of returner than maybe the traditional kickoff returner. Um, you know, may, you might see guys that are better with the ball in their hands that maybe aren't returners in the sense that they're the punt returner or the kickoff returner. Um, there's a little bit more flexibility for the play because uh, it's going to be so unique and, and 
shorter distance and shorter coverage, and the ball is going to get in their hands quicker. So uh, there's definitely places for guys that maybe not in, in the past would be your traditional kick returner that that if they're a starting running back or receiver or they have some skill with the ball in their hand, then they have a chance to maybe make an impact there. Spot. You mentioned Trident could do other things. That mm -hmm. potential spot, look at him as a returner? Sure. The well. Yeah, there's absolutely. Um, you know, he's big and strong and fast, and there's, there's a chance that if, that's, if, if we can get more reps of it and see him do it, there's, there's certainly an opportunity there for him. Well, we say everybody looks good in shorts. And yeah. How do you determine right now if somebody's doing well or not? Um, I look at it more for the process oriented as far as do they know what to do? Um, are, they, are they really good in the meeting? Uh, can they take the, whatever's being taught technically from the meeting room to the field? Um, and then when they get chances to show that they can make a play or two, it's easier in the passing game, obviously, than it would be up, up front and in the trenches. Um, but you, you want to see guys transferring skills for what they're being taught from the drill work into the teamwork. Um, it is hard to know the physicality part of it and, and what that's going to look like. But um, you kind of have a feel for the guys that are doing things the, the, the way you want it done, and, and they're making uh, progress towards – uh, fixing a technique or doing better, a better technique. Um, that's more what I look at. The physicality part, I think, is, is for another day and time. But right now is more about the, the process of in the building, in the meeting room, how they handle all the, the learning uh, and how they handle the, the techniques and fundamentals that are being taught. And can they apply it uh, in, a, in, a, in a team period, even if it is a, a tempo down team period? Are they where they're supposed to be with their hands, the eyes, all those things? Um, that's, that's sort of how we evaluate those guys right now. With James Williams as he's developing as a rookie. Yeah, he's got he's got a ways to go, like like all the rookies do. Um, there's a lot of learning in place. He's obviously switching positions too, from uh, you know a safety in college into a linebacker spot, and uh, we think he's got a chance to to make that transition and, and be a pretty good linebacker. The way those linebackers are in the NFL now, they're all lighter and faster. A lot of them are converted, um, you know, kind of big safeties that convert into linebacker spots. Um, so it's it's a it's a unique developmental. Um, angle to take on, on a guy like him and you know I think he's he's got the traits to, to make make that switch and, and potentially be an impact player for us as a linebacker down the road and, and again he's going to have to make it on special teams too uh, that'll be an important part for him as well. You mentioned last week I think that uh, uh, tweaking Will's base just a little yeah. bit the, the footwork how's he taken of that and what are you kind of seeing? Yeah, that's been great I, I think one of the one of the things I enjoy about Will is he's incredibly coachable um, he's got a great perspective and he's got great awareness of, of his body mechanics. You know, some guys, it's a natural thing. They just feel what you're coaching. Um, and he's done a great job. I think he sees the benefit uh, in, in his mechanical improvement and his accuracy. i um, been really pleased with, with how much he's taken um, and translated into actually doing it, which has been fun to watch. Solidify the foundation you put into place in this three day window this week. And is there any benefit to being forced to go inside today or have the pressure? Just kind of those extra things that add a little adversity or pressure to yeah. what these three days are. I mean, that's what that's what the NFL season is. You know, you have to you have to adapt. You have to be flexible. Um, you're going to have stretches of good play. You're going to have stretches of bad play. You're going to have things go wrong that you didn't anticipate. Um, so. Any time that you can keep your team ready to pivot without having to do much uh, poking and prodding, they just sort of go with the flow and answer the bell. Whatever you're asking of them um, has been that's been fun to see. We have a pretty resilient team, I think. Um, we'll find out a whole lot more as, as we get closer to the season. But uh, anytime you can do things that are hard in practice or hard uh, in your in your daily process, uh, it certainly makes the the transition when it happens for real a whole lot easier and much more prepared to to bounce back from whatever it is that uh, you're facing that day that drive that game uh, a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago you mentioned now just how excited you are to to use tajay and mm -hmm. and tony and just the versatility you have with them uh considering the uh kind of the weapons you guys have on the outside the attention that they're gonna get how how does how do you I mean, just in terms of creativity, like what you guys can potentially do with them because of that attention going to the receivers. Yeah, there's, there's, um, you end up getting a lot of one on ones, which is, you know, ultimately what the NFL in, in most passing situations is, is can you win the one on one matchup? And, and it doesn't necessarily have to mean a, a wide receiver on a corner. Uh, those one on ones can be tight ends on safeties or tight ends on linebackers or, or backs on linebackers. There's, those are the ones, the matchups that you try to exploit. You try to find whatever matchup you can find that, um, is to your advantage. And a lot of times when you have backs like those two guys, um, they're going to be the matchup advantage against linebackers most of the time. Uh, and so you try to find every which way you can to put them in that space 
so they can go beat what is likely a lesser athlete and um they both have the ability to do it and so as we get closer to game planning and less installing of a system now we have a chance to be a little more free and creative with with how we deploy them in the formation um and use them against against players that we think they can go beat seen from Gibby and how he's kind of taking command, especially in calling out what Denard wanted to see today? Um, really pleased with, with where Gibbs at. Uh, he's He's got a little bit of experience behind him now. Um, he's incredibly smart, and I think the way you ask the question is the best way that you see command from him, which is uh, what you need from that spot. And he's, he knows what to do. He knows how to get guys lined up. Um, he's got a little bit of experience now, and so uh, a player like him has a lot of value, and, and he's been a, he's been a, a pleasant uh, surprise as he's as he's taken a leadership role in that room, uh, and and been able to take over a little bit more of the communication part as well. Obviously, because because Kenneth is um, not in every rep right now because of the return to play process, so uh, it's a chance for him to really take hold of it, and he has. He's done a really nice job. Some of the maybe athleticism that that he's not at the top of the scales on the Yeah, speed. I think there's there's a there's a lot of ways that uh, you don't have to necessarily be a, a high-end athlete to be a good linebacker. You know, I think there's there's a lot more that goes into playing linebacker. There's there's the instincts, um, there's the speed at which they can read and diagnose and, and trigger and make plays on the ball. Um, it's knowing where to match in the passing game. It's knowing uh, understanding concepts. So there's a lot of ways that, that guys that that may not be the the high end high weight speed guys that can that can make a, a long living in the NFL doing things the right way. And I think that um, that's one of the things I think stands out about Gibb is his, his ability to know what to do and when to do it um, is, is what's going to separate him. How much of the juke move kind of taking advantage of the right tackle reps he's getting? I know pads are not on, but yeah. with NPF and Duncan's availability limited, how much is he kind of banking reps and taking advantage of it? Uh, he's, he's doing everything that you would want a player in that situation to do. Um, he takes it very serious. He's, he's outstanding in the meeting room. Um, he's, he's taken the, the scheme and he's learned it. Um, I've been really surprised that, you know, he's a guy that I didn't know much about. And, and as he's gotten more opportunities, um, he started to show up. And that's when you're a guy in that position, that's all you can ask for. And so he keeps stacking good days together. Um, and so, again, we'll see when we get to training camp what that looks like. But uh, he's done everything you could possibly do with, with an opportunity that he's been given. And um, that's always good to see. You got here, and then what have you seen from him in the building? Um, I've known a lot, I've had to play against Harold a few times, and so I'm, I'm well aware of what he can bring uh, to the table. He's a really, really good football player. Um, I love the, I love his energy. I love the way he, he bounces around. I had to slow him down on the walk, our, our walkthrough period there for a minute. He was flying, um, but I, I just have a ton of respect for what he's done. He's incredibly smart. Um, he really, he really studies football, and he's got the, the physical tools and talent to, to match it, and so. Uh, I think it's a pretty formidable pairing with Arden and, and Harold on the edges. Um, those guys have played some pretty good football for a while now. So uh, it's good to have him back in the building uh, and have him around some too, which has been great. Dad was an award winner today. The, the yeah, it's pretty cool, award. isn't it? Yeah. Nice to see him get recognized for yeah. what he's done over the years. That was pretty cool. He, uh, to be to be recognized for a Lifetime Achievement Award, I think, in any field is a, is a pretty tremendous honor. Uh, it's one that I don't think he takes lightly. Uh, but it's, a, it's cool for me to be able to – Tell that to him, um, but yeah, he's 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 certainly deserving of it. I mean, what he's done over his career and and the players he's helped along the way, uh, you know, one become really good players and two make a lot of money, and that's ultimately what you want to do as a coach is put those guys in position to have success. And really cool moment for him to be able to. to offensive line coaches don't get honored very often like that, uh, and so to very deserving and, and and proud of him. It's pretty cool, pretty cool for him. You tell him that in like a private setting, or is that no? I told him when we broke the team down. Um, well, he was he was him and he was talking about whatever happened the last play before we brought it up, and so he didn't even hear me. Um, <laughs> I, I I I told the team that he he wins this award, and I look over and he's and he's talking talking to Scott, and he kind of looks at me like, "What did I miss?" I was like, "Come on over here, we need you." Um, so he just he said a couple brief words and and just was thankful for the honor. But yeah, he's kind of in full full coach mode and didn't really understand what I was telling him in the moment. So everyone's cheering for him, and he's looking at me like, what is going on? So, Can you help us understand the, the limitations on the number of people we're allowed to talk to after these practices? Uh, it's just kind of how it's always been for me. It's just open locker rooms in the spring, put guys in a tough spot, and 
uh, one of the things I believe in, and this is this isn't a, a you thing; it's a me thing. It's um, as we started to build our culture here, I didn't want guys to have to speak on something that they hadn't experienced yet, and so I wanted to make sure that that we got to know the players, they got to know us, and so when they were asked questions about how things go, what we're doing, scheme, and all that stuff, they had things to answer, um, and so it's more of a it's more of a a me, a me thing, wanting to make sure that those guys were prepared to be in front of you guys and be able to speak on the things that you want them to speak about. So um, that's generally the, the th off-season thought process for me.